she started to walk away, she heard the sounds of it loading. You may fire when ready. Alaska uncut. State troopers! State troopers, come out with your hands up! State troopers! I heard a female yelling, help, help, help. This is really bad right here. <laughs> barricaded himself, he's armed himself with a rifle. Come on out, man. I need to talk to you. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Hey, Icon 4523. It's 4 o'clock in Wasilla but violence doesn't stick to a schedule. Complainant is advising that her ex-fiance is 1056. He's yelling at the complainant, started shoving her around. When she tried to call the cops initially, he took the phone from her and threw it across the room. 345, you can upgrade. 45, tell me. The terrified caller is pregnant, alone, and in grave danger. She said that her boyfriend had assaulted her. What we don't want is for her to disconnect and then things to get out of hand and her be unable to call us back. Alaska's domestic violence rate is twice the national average. Throw into the mix Alaska having one of the highest rates of gun deaths in the nation, and Noel doesn't have a second to lose. We're about 40 miles away. Gotta hurry up and get there. 20 miles out, the situation turns desperate. The complainant is advising that he has a large rifle. He's closed the doors, rambling that he's going to shoot her. The male is now threatening to shoot her. He said he was going to get his gun and kill her. She started to walk away. She heard the sounds of it loading. Large crash, some form of loud noise, possibly a bank from the residence. Back on 41, have her walk further away from the house. The gunman's pregnant girlfriend is still in extreme danger. The gun that he does have is going to have a long range. We need her to, to pull back. She's definitely in range. Trooper Noel braces for a shootout. And since 30% of assaults on law officers occur during disturbance calls, the odds are against him. Suddenly, shots ring out in the distance. They may be too late. Then, they spot someone. It's the shaken up victim. He put his gun in my face, and when I told him that if he didn't stop threatening to put his gun in my face, I was gonna you know, call somebody, and he started shoving me. So Did I, he know we were coming? Yeah. Okay. He was screaming at me. He was intoxicated. And then about 10 minutes ago, I heard a big bang from the house. Did it sound like a gunshot, or? It sounded like it could have been. Is it a rifle, or a? a rifle. Okay. Like a big, like if you shot a bear in the face, he'd said. The gunman is unstable, enraged, and very drunk. You know, he has a 4570 Magnum, which is about as hardcore of a bear gun as you can get. It's what uh, you would use if you were going to Kodiak to go after the biggest brown bears that there are on the continent. I'm going to angle up through the woods here a little bit. They head into the woods and surround the gunman's cabin. They don't know if he's still inside or if he has the troopers in his sights. There's nothing in, the, in these woods that would stop around. It could go through one, two, you know, trees just like that. And through their bulletproof vest. More gunfire. 
troopers must end this before he kills someone. 1745 FBI on the front door. Troopers Hess and Viator try to make contact. See Alaska State Troopers, can you come outside and talk to us? Hey, Trooper. Come on out, man. We need to talk to you. No answer. Hey, Trooper. Come out. At this point, he's barricaded himself. He's, uh, he's armed himself with a rifle. We know he's in there. We hear him moving around. We've tried to call him out multiple times on phone and uh, just calling to him, and he's not coming out. Noel digs in for a deadly standoff. I don't like that skylight. That's, there's a glare off of it. I don't know if you can access it or not, but uh, if you can, I can't see him. You don't know how it's going to transpire. You don't know what is going to happen from each moment to the next. You know, any moment he could come out that door with a, with a gun. Definitely gets the heart pumping. Suddenly, the front door swings open. Hey, trooper! Hey, let me see your hand! Hitting fire. You okay? So drunk, he can't even stand up. Hey, you okay, buddy? Want to clear the rest? Yep. Find that firearm. It's you got it. Clear. Yep. With the gun secure, they call medics for the passed out man. So these are uh, 4570 rounds, 4570 Magnum rounds from his uh, rifle. It's a very heavy duty bear gun. This will punch through pretty much anything. You know, he's with his pregnant girlfriend pushing her around, threatening to shoot her with that. If he shot her with that close range, there'd be nothing left. As we were maintaining the cover, he opened up the door and uh, more or less fell out the front door onto the porch. Now, why don't you uh, lay on your side here, okay? He's uh, extremely intoxicated. He's barely, he's barely functioning. There's a trail of uh, puke from the kitchen out to here. Did you take anything other than alcohol? No? Can you understand what I'm saying? <coughs> All right, we got some paramedics coming for you, buddy, okay? This is pretty much the best case scenario. We stayed safe, he, he didn't get hurt either. He's gonna go to the hospital because he's so intoxicated, but he's not injured at all. The man faces felony assault and domestic violence charges. He just turned 18, you know. He needs to start now to start turning his life around. Hopefully this is a wake up call for him and he can uh, turn it around from here. One hundred miles south, in the coastal town of Seward, time's running out for a missing hiker on Mount Marathon. I got called to search and rescue. A 66-year-old male went up over the top, last seen about 6 p.m. till about 9.30 right now. Mount Marathon is a popular hiking route at the edge of the Kenai Mountains. But for the unlucky or unprepared, its steep trails can become a death trap. Just three years ago, in more favorable conditions than these, a man slipped over a cliff to his death. There's still quite a bit of snow up there. and My fear is he may have slid down one of those paths. The narrow paths cling to the side of steep rock faces, leaving no room for air. This is this man's first time running this mountain. I've um, got a helo on standby. We're going to have a spotter go up with him and see if they can find him. We do have last visual of him at the top of the mountain. These two cliff areas, this is a 300 foot drop right here, and this backside is, is vicious. The troopers can't waste a second. Night falls less than an hour away, and when the sun goes down, the temperature will plummet to 40 degrees. We got about 40 minutes or so of daylight. We're gonna start pulling people off here pretty soon. 
Okay. Too dangerous for you guys to be up there. Right at Mount Marathon often lures inexperienced hikers who underestimate the danger. It's a mistake some don't get to make twice. So troopers send experienced hiker David Loring up the treacherous mountainside. I have knowledge of this mountain, and um, if we have any search and rescues on this mountain, I'm the one that's supposed to respond to it. So that's where they wanted me to go, was down here. What was a trail earlier today is now a river of mud. And one wrong step can mean a deadly 30-story drop. So they put this trail in to bypass these rocks here to come up. But as you can see, this trail is pretty, pretty slippery. People are, you know, they're just coming down fast and they slip on the slippery rocks. The next thing you know, it's a a good little drop down to, uh, to the bottom of the chute there. As the darkness and cold grows, Trooper Loring's optimism fades. Clearly, the higher you go, the colder it gets. Uh, hypothermia, you, especially when you get damp and in, in these conditions in a rainforest type of environment, it can set in really fast. A cry for help, but it's a woman's. You in the trees? Someone else is lost on the mountain. Can you see me? I'm coming. Just stay there, don't move. You aren't cut up or anything? Okay. It's not the 66-year-old man he originally set out to find. Pretty cold? Yeah. Is okay. there, like, down there, is there, like, anywhere I can go in? Yeah, we'll get you help. She had a pair of running pants on. They were ripped. Um, I did see a little bit of blood. Um, she was shivering. She was sopping wet. She was stuck. And she says there may be others lost out here. Her brother and cousin were with her none of them equipped for the dangerous hike. This girl slipped and got stuck, and the trio separated when her family went for help. OK, I'm going to go get them. Just stay here. If you stay here, I'll find you. Well, we'll be have down 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 her. With less than a half hour of daylight before temperatures plunge, Trooper Loring hits the slick trail to find them and the missing man. He radios his position to base camp. I'm going to go. I'm going to get these other two and then bring all three of them there. Ten more. Okay, yeah, this is really bad right here. Yeah. Twenty-one forty-two. Twenty-one forty-two. Forty-two. Code for twenty-one. Hey, Lauren, they've already got the other two. Uh, two that were fired from your gun. Ten four. I'll be back on the orange trail then. Lauren takes the girl to the rescuers at the bottom of the trail. Where the team may have found a clue that will lead them to the lost man. 
This was right on the bottom. I don't know if it could be a clue or something. It's just right there at this last part. So far, it's their only lead. Yeah, of course. That's not his. I don't know. Is it? Do we know where the family is? One of them's in here. In the back on the couch there. Did you see what he was wearing this morning by chance? I didn't. OK. Where was that located at? It was on the mountain Let's go down low, dude. Come on. But, uh, probably not. OK. The shirt belonged to someone else. It's no help at all. It's turned into a whaling melee mess. The dwindling daylight forces the troopers to call off the foot search till morning. But the man could die in the overnight freeze. So they take to the air with a thermal camera in a last ditch attempt to find him. The weather, the rain coming down, if they find this guy, they've got to offload the trooper in the dark. The temperature's down pretty low. With that thermal camera, we'll be able to spot him pretty quick. He's going to stick out like a sore thumb up there. After scanning the hillside for several tense hours, the helicopter abruptly lands on the mountaintop. Landing could mean a couple of different things. They could be having trouble with the helicopter, or they could have found the subject. They could be trying to get down to him. OK, so it, it, no, no, no contact with him right now? The helicopter searches through the night and into the next day and finds nothing. They've been unsuccessful in locating him so far. He, we, we may be stuck under a log or something, which would have not helped us out any. He could be hiding somewhere, uh, trying to stay warm, because it's the weather's pretty deteriorated right now. But they're not ready to give up yet. After three more days of searching, troopers exhaust every option. Finally, they call off the search. It's been over 72 hours. During this time frame, I've probably received about 10 hours sleep. I'm going to kind of go home and try to reprocess and reorganize things. It really teaches you to focus what's important in life, because none of us really know what the future holds. All we really have is the now. To this day, the man still hasn't been found. Back north in the Matsu Valley, Trooper Jared Knoll is on a different sort of manhunt. The vehicle pulled out a 9 millimeter pointed at the driver connection with them. So we're going to a uh, road rage incident. Had a passenger of a vehicle threw an object at another car. When the complainant pulled up to confront him, the passenger of the vehicle pulled a nine millimeter <laughs> and pointed it at the complainant. It's estimated aggressive driving causes two thirds of all US traffic fatalities an alarming statistic in the Matsu Valley, where over 70% of citizens are armed. Apparently, there is still one person left in the suspect vehicle, which is now circling the parking lot. And with a gun in the mix, Trooper Noel fears this call may turn lethal. Uh, no one's on scene yet. It's imperative that we get there quickly. Could turn into a dangerous situation quite rapidly. Troopers soon discover the armed suspect's truck, but it's empty. It's a race against the clock to find an armed and angry man, so they head into the bowling alley, hoping to intercept him. Check the pool hall. He could be hiding anywhere, just looking for any excuse to pick a fight. Right. We're going to step out here and talk right here, OK? Trooper Noel finds the driver of the truck, while outside, 
troopers stop and disarm her unruly passenger, the gunman. You were bringing up the assault earlier, from what I can understand? I threw a handful of change out my window. Okay. Have you been drinking? Yeah. Okay. I didn't look whenever the uh, officer grabbed the handgun. Was it loaded? Was there one in the chamber? Oh, there's a loaded clip. Basically, we call it the constant of felony assault. Noel questions the driver. Did you get in some sort of uh, road rage incident with somebody? She tells Noel that another driver started it. She and her passenger are the victims. We okay. pulled out in the view, and like, as soon as we pulled out, he started tailgating us and riding us, and then he would okay. pull over like almost in the ditch. It was like swerving. He was reckless driving and trying to pass us, okay. and threw up a beer bottle. And then her passenger whipped out a gun. Just carries a, a gun for protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did he point it at the guy? Oh, he had just taken it out and put it on the side. So how did the other guy see it then? Not like holding it up. He just like, I guess, yeah, kind of. But he did it kind of get the message like... across. They search her truck and discover her passengers equipped to do serious damage. An M25 Savage. It's a 300 uh, Winchester Magnum, high power, large caliber hunting rifle. Three uh, 15 round clips that are loaded. Handling a gun while drinking can get him a year in prison. Well, here's the thing, we have the issue of the guns and you've been drinking. So yeah. I'm gonna ask you to provide a uh, PPT. You willing to do that for me tonight? Yeah. Six, seven, eight, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Phillips, around here, take a deep breath and blow, all right? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right. So you've done this before? Yeah. All right. It's not good. Go ahead and hang out the back side of your car. Give yep. me one minute, I'll be back with you, all right? Oh, one, one, one. So really low. The man isn't drunk, but he still must answer for pulling a gun on the other driver. This guy in Vigil Lake had three guns all together. The handgun he produced was actually ready to go, one in the chamber. Uh, we're gonna file basically four charges on him for reckless endangerment with the gun. You're not going to jail tonight. Probably not the smartest thing to pull a gun, right? I think we both can agree upon that. Yeah. Go ahead and pour it out. I, don't, I can't put it back in your car, just go pour that out. We're not gonna push that issue, okay? Yeah. Zero tolerance basically for any type of this. Guns, liquor. I was happy that nobody got shot and that it didn't escalate to that point. Across town, the female house outside of the residence at this time, male still inside. Trooper Hess bounces through a busy day of calls. Another disturbance, a woman called said her husband was throwing around the house and trying to choke her. The male involved is no stranger to law enforcement. He's got some disorderly conduct warnings, and then his mother also at one time had a protective order against them. We got other units coming, but it sounds like we'll be the first ones there. How's it going? Anybody else inside? No, so it's just you two? Yeah. Our baby. All right, ma'am, can you come talk to me? We'll go up over here. Okay, so what happened tonight? What, what made you call 911? He drank a ton of beer, was watching hockey, and then he started ranting and raving about all kinds of stuff. Then he's gonna desecrate all these people. And mm -hmm. then you know, then I went to go outside, and then he grabbed me by this right here, and he threw me inside over the side of the couch, and then he said he was gonna beat my face in, and the baby's like right there on the couch. When he was twisting your shirt, did it ever impede your breathing? He's choked me before to where I passed out, and I never called the cops, and that was when I was pregnant with our baby. He's had a bunch of beer tonight? He's had at least 18 beers. Tell you what, you just wanna hang out right there for a second for me? So you told the sergeant that nothing happened. Why would she call us? This isn't the first time that she's called you guys just because she gets upset. And What's she upset about then? She, I think she, she just gets mad at me, like sick of my stuff or whatever. How much have you had to drink today? Just a few beers, just like her. She's had a few too. Obviously something happened for two reasons. One, you're not answering the question truthfully. And two, we got called. We're not gonna get called for no reason. I just wanna, I just wanna get out of the situation but he's still holding his baby. Tell you what, can you go ahead and put her down for me? Don't worry, everything's gonna be all right, but you gotta put her down. Listen, we're not trying to make this any harder, but we gotta put the baby down, okay? So put her right there where she was. Come on, man. 
We'll make sure she's taken care of. So you're gonna, you're gonna be under arrest. No. Is she here? Get her the out of my house. Right back here. This is bullshit. The easiest way to do this is sit down and then swing your legs in, okay? Why aren't you guys charging her with anything? Sit down. Sit down. No, I'm asking. We're gonna do this the easy way or the hard way. Turn around. Please, wait, 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 wait. You gotta get in the car. I apologize, officer. It's all right. No, it's not. Over 200 miles north in Fairbanks, Alaska's second largest city sits below the Arctic Circle and basks in over 20 hours of daylight in summer. And with longer days comes a spike in crime. We have a fight at our hotel here in town. It sounds like a female trying to jump off the balcony inside the lobby. They find a bloody and badly beaten woman. The woman's hysterical and may pose a threat to herself and troopers. They're forced to put her in cuffs. Looks like she got assaulted. She got a black guy and her lips are all swollen. We came in and she uh, was trying to roll over the banister on the second story and uh, there's blood everywhere in the second story and she keeps on spelling her first name. Meanwhile, Lott and other troopers head to her room to apprehend her attacker. State troopers, open the door. State troopers, open the door, we're coming in. Clear. Fair more inside the room. No one's there. We're definitely fighting here, huh? Oh yeah. 3115, this room's all hazmat. A lot of blood. Temple, I'll see if I can get further. She's uh, highly 1056. What happened here? She kept hitting me in the with face. A, with like open-handed or with a fist? With a fist. With a fist? Okay, yeah. how many times did she hit you? I don't even remember. She just yeah. kept telling me to tell the police officers that she hit me in the face and in the stomach. Okay. The room is registered to a man, a known criminal currently on probation for another assault. I saw a guy leaving here, walking down Old Airport with that, you see him? Yeah, great, yeah. Think that's our boy? Yeah, I'll bet it is. Units uh, in the area, check around. When I was coming in, there was a white male wearing gray hoodie, blue jeans in the area, and didn't make eye contact with me when I drove in. Go see if you can move But before Lot can catch his suspect, a much more urgent call comes in. 32 is reported on the floorboard of the vehicle. Plate on the vehicle where it comes back in a black truck. There's a guy that's supposedly passed out in a truck, possibly intoxicated with a gun on the, that's inside the truck. So who knows? With a drunk and armed man inside the vehicle, troopers brace for the worst. Hey, buddy. How's it going? It's going down. Huh? Why'd you have a gun on the floorboard? Did. I just secured it before I woke up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want you to wake up and actually grab it or something. Is it yours? 
45? I don't know, is it a 45? Yeah. Good luck. Can you advise if it's a 45? <clears throat> uh, no, it's a 9 mil. So do I have another gun in here I still need to be concerned about? Do you own a 45? Uh, yeah. Is it, in this, is it in this vehicle? A quick search turns up two more weapons. Both were loaded. It's against the law in Alaska to possess a firearm and be under some kind of a controlled substance. So when was the last time you had something to drink? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while? Yeah. So why are you sleeping here in the parking lot? Do you even know where you're at? Yeah. Where are you from? All right, Trooper Law's going to talk to you real quick. All right? Oh, yeah. Okay, but I'm going to ask you to step out of the vehicle, okay, just to make sure that you're all right to operate a vehicle, all right? I, there's nothing wrong with what I do right now. You're in the operator's position of, of this vehicle right now. With the keys and the ignition, we found you as is, okay? Right. Having the keys and the ignition allows the troopers to charge the driver with DUI. I'm make sure you, right now. You're calling who? 911. You didn't go anywhere. Oh, no, correct. Not since I've been here. Right. Okay. So you're going to step out of the vehicle to do some sobriety test? I, I can get out. I can do the sobriety. All right. Step back here for me. Can you say your alphabet from E to P for me? <clears throat> e, F, M, P, H, I, J, K, L, M, P. Can start over again? Sure, you can start over? E. Okay. Okay. I want to ask you this. Are you going to keep doing these tests with me or not? I'm going to do a whole field sobriety. I know that I'm f***ed up. Yeah. So are we going to continue with these or no? I'm not driving nowhere. Are you going to keep doing these tests or not? Not for anybody's amusement, no. It's not for my amusement. All right, do me a favor. Turn around for me. Okay, you're under arrest for DUI, all right? Yeah, I'm sitting in the parking lot, all right? That is correct. Who called me in? I don't know. I was by myself in a, in a uh, car in a parking lot. Later that night, as the sun sets over Fairbanks, Unit for a possible break-in in progress. Trooper Rich races to the aid of a frantic caller. The complainant is reporting she was inside her house when she heard somebody on the stairs. Four teens are home alone. Uh, we're not too far away. The other closest units are coming from Poe, so I'm ahead of them. Trooper Rich arrives first and faces an unknown situation without backup. 24, 10, 23. 10, 4, 10, 4. Deck is secure. He spots the intruder's possible entry point. She said this window. Yeah. With backup finally on scene, they head in, guns drawn. Stay troopers! Stay troopers! Stay troopers! Got stairs. Stay troopers! Stay Ready? troopers! Crawl space. Stay troopers! Stay troopers! Clear on the left, clear on the left. Hayes, you take this uh, stairs on the long gun. We'll take this hallway. Stay troopers! Come out with your hands up! Clear. Clear? They sweep practically the entire house. No sign of intruders or the frightened teens. 
Only one room left. Lock door. Open the door. If you're inside, talk to us now. It's the room with the open window. And if there's an intruder, this is where he'll be. Well, you know, it's not 14. I'm going to go through the window. Troopers! Say troopers, come out with your hands up! Where? Troopers narrow their sweep of the house down to one room, but come up empty. Coming out. There's no sign of any intruder. It doesn't look like anybody left. All the doors were locked, so might just be they heard something upstairs. Trooper Rich finds the terrified teens who fled next door. Okay, so cleared the entire house twice. Okay, we did a primary search and we went back through a little bit slower and make sure that we got all the little areas. Nobody's in there hiding. So okay. were we watching scary movies? <laughs> no. no, okay. So if you guys have any other problems or anything else suspicious going on, give us a holler. We don't have a problem coming up here and doing stuff like this. It's good training for us, if nothing else, too, you know? All right. Okay? So sleep good tonight? Sounds good. Okay. All right, guys. This calls a false alarm. But south in the Matsu Valley... No, they went up there. Trooper Jared Knoll has his suspect in his sights. Then went down there. Thank you for leaving a dust cloud. Oh, they're going fast, too. Suddenly, it pulls to a stop. Man, I got on 45. 45. Occupants bailed. Noel spots the suspect trying to hide in the forest. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Show me your hands now. Who else is with you, man? What's that, sir? Who else is with you? I don't know. I was picked up on the side of the road, okay. and they just took off. Just turn around. You know who they were? I don't know their names. Where'd they go from here? They just took off, and I was trying to uh. Two guys or a guy and a girl? The guy and a girl? I was trying to get my gas money back. The suspects ditched the car. Did they say anything about drugs to you? Uh, no, I don't know. But left some clues. Uh, heroin residue. Found an envelope addressed to somebody in the vehicle. Let's see if uh, it's perhaps the individual. The male was driving, the, the passenger was a female. I've got the passenger. The passenger was a hitchhiker, just got picked up. Trooper Darby arrives, and he's picked up a passenger of his own, possibly one of the guys who fled the car Noel's been chasing. What's your name? My name's Yeah. Why'd you run? Why'd I run? Yeah, why'd you run from the car? I was walking up the road. I wasn't running from anyone's car. A lot like him. Where'd you pick him up at? Uh, he was coming up Bogle Bluff up the hill. So okay. if, he, if he dove off to the right, and he had been right there. This guy was sweating like he had just ran a marathon. I guarantee it's him. Yeah. All right, here's the deal. There's heroin residue in there. Did you run just because you had the ID only, no driver's license, or did you have drugs on you that you ditched? Either, I mean, no, I wasn't driving then. Hey, well, we can, we're beyond that. All right, you can think about right. driving, but I wasn't. You, can you do some of these, please? This is no. Ridiculous. No. If you were being cooperative, that'd be one thing, but you're not. What, what do you want me to tell you? Tell me the truth. All right, I was, I was but just when it looks like this case is wrapped. Come on out, we're going to put you in uh, my car. I have something I need to tell you. Okay. I have something in my sock. What is it? It's a needle. 
When was the last time you shot up? On heroin too. Where's this girl at? In the woods. We tried calling her. She wouldn't answer. But Trooper Noel has more immediate concerns than chasing the missing woman. Right now, he's chasing the facts. Open up all the foil packets that can oh, find. Oh, those are not his. I almost guarantee it. Make sure you seize those. I have a case with stolen nail guns. And it looks like the driver just got nailed. Those are uh, common items stolen. Pneumatic air guns stolen from construction sites. And he doesn't have a job, so he's got no need for something like that that costs several thousand. But the driver claims the nail guns aren't his. What's his last name? I have no idea. You're going to need to do better than that. Not because here's the deal, man. I got a couple thefts uh, with stolen nail guns, OK? And if I run them serial numbers and they come back as stolen, guess whose pos possession they're in? That, that comes back right on you, OK? All right, just hang tight and let this trooper figure out what he's going to do with you, OK? The man now faces possible theft charges. You want those just uh, taken back to the former post? Yeah, if you would. He ran because he didn't have a driver's license. He didn't want to get in trouble for that. And there's also some heroin paraphernalia in the vehicle with some what looked like some burnt residue. Uh, there wasn't enough to test. So it wasn't anything that we could uh, charge him with. All right, here's, what, here's the deal with this, OK? What we're going to do is I'm going to give you a ticket, release you with a court date. All right? Follow, follow so far? OK. Make sure you show up to that court date, or uh, else you'll have a warrant. Finally, as night falls, the hidden female passenger emerges from the forest. Why'd you run? You don't have a warrant. No one took off on me. I was scared I didn't know what to do. All right. And I just bought this car. How far in the woods did you make it? Just right behind me, pretty much at this tree right there. So you're watching this all the time? Sort of. <laughs> Since she wasn't driving, Noel lets her off with a warning. All right. He had never been convicted of a crime before. Hopefully it uh, teaches them that, uh, you know, first off, don't be, uh, breaking the law and uh, second of all take responsibility if you if you do get caught because you know running just made it worse for him on the other hand for folks running to find solitude south central alaska fits the bill this is one of the most remote corners of the state and trooper josh heinbaugh's patrol this is one of those areas where you really never know what's going to happen. This is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And out here, he never knows who he'll run into. I'm going to run into my car. Normally, they don't run down the road like that, but lots of coyote. That explains it. They save that caribou's life. Sometimes they'll travel in like real small packs, but most of the time they're by themselves. But the coyotes aren't the area's only loners. Out here, we call it kind of end of the rotors. Um, that, you know, these people come out here to, to be alone. They don't want to be around any sort of organized government rules and, and having to, to obey laws. So I just, you know, make it a point to have go-to people in each one of the communities. There's no backup for me. Right now we have one of the, the typical Alaskans, you know, pretty independent, you know, has pretty extensive firearm collection. One of his favorite things is a cannon that uh, he shoots off fairly regularly. If I got sent to out a call to out his place, I'd be definitely be concerned. Man, he's home. Yeah. Hey, George. How have you been? I'm fine. Got a good to see you, man. Yeah. Come on in, I'll show you a couple of guns, just for fun. I'm not ashamed of my place, it's just all this a mess. I got lots of weird stuff, but it's scattered all over. I have a real nifty bunch of uh, US cavalry stuff, but uh, I'm sort of into antique guns. This is a Schofield. 
U.S. Cavalry issue 1876. And here is an officer's issue Ainsworth first model. That cost me an ex-wife because uh, I had promised her a car. She didn't get the car and I bought the gun. And that, of course, my pride and joy. <laughs> so you got a lot of neat stuff in here, George. I know that. Real? And uh, here we are. There's my cannon. This is brass. And it's a very gorgeous piece of equipment, actually. The old ships would have about five or six of these mounted on the rails to use as a swivel cannon. And this is actually a swivel cannon. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it is here a toy. If you want me to, I'll load it up for you. Great. You will not want to stand there when it goes off, I guarantee you. All right. We loaded the darn thing. Now, we have to sort of aim it. Well, it doesn't really matter if it, if it hits the ground, it'll still bounce off that thing and there's another wheel behind it. And of course, this is all completely legal in this part of the world. All right, somebody light it. It's going to be loud. You may fire when ready. Got it. That's awesome. I never get sick of that, George. It's always fun to play with toys. <laughs> I can do anything here I want to do. It's still a free country. I happen to know if I get phone calls around 4th of July at cannon fire, you know, out here in Slant, I'm going to know where it's coming from. Um, he likes his guns, likes, uh, likes being out here by himself. 